It's an experience reserved for only a handful, for those who choose to become one with the machine, for those willing to push themselves and the engineering to the limits, for those who have no doubts, the experience has few rivals. The 1999 Saab Vigan, inspired by pure power. I sit behind a lot of different controls, but one thing I demand from all of them is responsiveness. That's why when I'm in a Vigan, it feels right. Whether I'm in the pilot's seat or the driver's seat. The 1999-93 Vigan is a high-performance sports model in three-door, five-door, or convertible versions. Here, let's do a little pre-flight check. You'll notice some things about this car immediately like its sleek, inspired exterior from the ground up. There are larger 17 by 7 and a half inch five-spoke aluminum wheels and low-profile, high-performance 215-45 Z-rated tires. As we move around the car, the Vigan's handsome gray side molding and bumper inserts provide a unified look. Along the front, there's a unique one-piece spoiler, painted to match the body. Notice the larger screened intake opening. Also notice that the front grille has been streamlined without the 9.3's usual rubber molding along the bottom. Also note the new lower panels with removable covers for the jacking points. The new rear skirt is also painted. And around the back, the high finish exhaust pipe is a nice detail. This is part of a new rear muffler with less back pressure and a characteristic sound for the Vigan. The rear spoiler is also new, and on three and five door models, this necessitates a different antenna, which is tuned for both AM and FM. One note here, the antenna is easily removable, and it must be removed before entering a car wash. Also note that the antenna amplifier is contained in the base of the antenna. And because the Vigan convertible has a different rear spoiler, it comes with a standard 9.3 motorized antenna. Incidentally, this is lightning blue, a new color unique to the Vigan. It will also be available in black and silver. I feel right at home with the dash inspired by aircraft cockpits. The gray upper surface blends perfectly with the aluminum colored instrument panel faceplate. Saab has replaced the standard 9.3 main instrument unit with a 9.5 unit, incorporating a boost gauge. Even the 9.3 seats have been restyled for performance, with special padding and upholstery, both in the front and rear. The center inserts come in either blue or black textured leather, with matching door and side panel inserts. Each seat is emblazoned with the bold Vigan signature. Also notice the new steering wheel with thicker padding. Now let's take a look under the hood. See what gives the Vigan its distinctive character. The first time you drive the Vigan, you'll feel the difference. Maximum engine horsepower is 225 at 5,500 RPM, with 252 foot-pounds of torque at 2,500 RPM. The Vigan's top speed is 155 at miles per hour, limited by the engine control module. Saab began with a larger 9.5 engine, the B235. The engine management system is Trionic T7. Saab engineers have fine-tuned the software to recalibrate the torque curve for even higher performance. Maximum torque is limited in first and second gears and reverse. In the convertible, the torque has been limited slightly more in first and second gear to minimize body flex. One other thing, in order to achieve the best performance, the Vigan requires fuel with an octane rating of at least 92. The B235R engine has been modified to maximize performance. For example, the exhaust valves are made of a special heat-resistant alloy. There is a 5 millimeter cavity in the valve heads to distinguish them from the standard valves. New reinforced Molly pistons have also been installed, 
with special wrist pins. The Vigan has platinum spark plugs and a Mitsubishi turbocharger. The Vigan is currently available only with a manual transmission. Like the engine, the gearbox and clutch is also beefier than the standard 9.3. The axles are 9.5. The gear case and clutch housing are reinforced, and the clutch pressure plate and clutch disc are heavy-duty versions to handle the higher torque. While we're under the hood, I should say a little more about diagnostics. I've already mentioned that the Vigan is equipped with the Trionic T7 engine management system. Because of this, the 9.3 Vigan has a P-Bus in addition to the standard 9.3's I-Bus. The bus functions on the Vigan are now the same as on the 9.5. Now let's take a look at the Vigan chassis. There have been some changes there too. It's been tuned for high performance without compromising ride quality. For example, the front and rear springs are stiffer, with the rear stops positioned higher up than in the standard 9.3. The front and rear shocks are also new. These changes have lowered the Vigan about 10 millimeters. While we're talking about the shocks, there's one critical piece of information regarding pre-delivery service. There are three transit packer shims on each of the front struts. These shims effectively disable the suspension system for shipping purposes. They are hidden by the strut boot. It is crucial that all three on each side be removed to avoid damage to the car. The last thing to debrief is the Vigan's new, more powerful brakes. On the front, the discs are almost an inch larger, and the calipers have been repositioned, making them suitable for larger wheels. Incidentally, you'll notice the brake calibers are powder-coated black all around. The front brake pads are the same as those used on the 9.5 and other 9.3s, but the rear pads, while appearing to be like those of the 9.3, actually are made of a new friction material. In addition, the rotors have been redesigned for improved cooling, with larger cooling channels between the discs and grooves on the discs themselves. Saab has also installed the vacuum servo from the 9.5. So that's the brief on the 1999 Vigan. It's an impressive piece of engineering, all designed for one thing, to provide every ounce of power and performance and handling possible. It's fun to talk about, but it's even more fun to drive it.